Hi, I'm Mona. This is a uh, chit chat. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> we we found we found a new spot here in uh, Arizona. My appointment is today. Um, I haven't been feeling really well lately, and you know, like getting kind of like overly emotional and stuff. And you know, my my uh, my brother's birthday just passed. You know, he passed away a few years back. And, you know, at first I thought I was being, like, <clears throat> over-emotional about that, right? But then I thought for a second, because last year when his birthday passed, I mean, I got emotional. Because I, I get emotional about my brother. I love my older brother who passed, you know? But it was bad this time. Like, this time it was extra bad. And, like, every little thing around me was getting, like, was irritating me. And then... I was uh, at the point to where I was crying and just tripping out. And, and then that last place I was at, like I could not eat over there. I couldn't even force feed a piece of bread. And you know, and I was trying so hard to keep hydrated and stuff. <clears throat> that spot right there though, it was a bad spot anyways, right? It didn't contribute to any um, anything good in regards to my healing right because <clears throat> as you guys know like I go around and I try to go into solitude and yeah you know I try to stay away from civilization because civilization is not going to help me heal you know people if you try to kind of talk to people out here about stuff and maybe you think oh you know have you been through that how, how did you heal you know whatever from it like people they don't even they're not even there's no they're not healing out here it's like over there they're all drinking they're drinking their sorrows away or they're doing something else you know uh i know the last night we were there there were a bunch of freaking tweakers like out in the distance like i got up in the middle of the night to use the the restroom and um yeah i was like what the heck is that you know with flashlights and stuff and i was like that's freaking creepy anyways you know that spot was a terrible spot and um almost like people go to some of these blm spots to just shack up and die or something because like alcoholics and drug addicts and and when I go to those spots it's like oh my god it's like I want to talk to them and I want to tell them that they there's more to life than that you know and and then they're like well you know I'm okay I don't you know and it's like and then when you talk to them about like you know stuff like well you know uh, you know, how's, you, how's things go? Because they're like, they act like, oh, I'm, everything is fine. We're great. But then you, you see what they're doing and, you know, how they're living. And dude, I went there and I, I mean, the, you don't take showers for days or people don't take showers. I do. I do. <laughs> I do. I, that's my, that was my priority when I left. Cause I swear to God, dude, when I left the last time, um, in Missouri, the very first in the beginning, dude, I didn't shower for like a week because I was just like, I didn't know <laughs> anything. I didn't know about like truck stops and all this things. And I was like, fuck, you know? And so, uh, and I, but I had the gym, uh, or I had a, I knew I had to get some sort of gym or something, but I didn't have it. So I was like, you know what? I have this bin. <laughs> I have this big bin that I got from uh, Tractor Supply, and I can fit it in here. And I'll freaking take a bath in here if I have to, you know. But like, you got people out here that they don't, they don't be washing, and <sighs> you know. But then again, you do meet some other people that you know they drink a lot and maybe they do have you know issues but they got common sense but why aren't you healing your problems you know like there's this one guy at the last place I really he's a really sweet guy you know and um and he drinks though and you know but he's not like he's like a functioning alcoholic he doesn't get out of hand he doesn't get violent he doesn't slur he doesn't but he's always got that drink there you know and he speaks common sense stuff you know what I mean? The stuff he's talking about is not really outlandish or crazy, you know? But there's other people around these certain, you know, aliens and controversies. And it's just like, oh, I can't handle that, you know? <laughs> you know, I, you know, I like to talk a little bit about the aliens and outer space and stuff. A little bit for entertainment. But when it's somebody who's like, no, it, that's it. It's, you know, and they're getting crazy about it. Like, that's a little too, too much. You know, it's that, or when they start, people start talking about the government. <laughs> that 
gets even worse, dude. Talking about the government and complaining about this person and that person and, you know, and I just... And it's like, okay, so you're complaining here. Well, why don't you, you know, like everybody likes to complain. That's a thing. Everybody likes to complain and, but nobody likes to fix anything. You know what I mean? Oh, oh, my life has been so hard. Well, what are you going to do to fix it? Like, can you do anything for yourself to pick yourself up? Because living, I mean, this for me, like people, you know, people think like, oh, she's just getting no I'm not just getting but I'm fine out here okay I'm fine you know I can go somewhere and rent something if I want I don't want to though because I'm kind of out here healing myself um and I feel like that nature is like the best for me you know and but when it's when nature is disturbed by toxicity like people who are not healed or don't want to heal themselves from their past traumas and they decide that they want to go drinking and drink their sorrows or do that meth or shoot that heroin I'm just not I just I can't I can't to deal with those kind of people you know I don't mind people who drink I totally don't I just don't like alcohol because I don't like the taste all right I'm not against it if you know how, if you know your limits. That's with everything, right? But people are, it's just too much. It's too much. And and it's it, this type of thing, when I see that, it makes my healing and all the progress I made backstep. Because then I start to, to trip out on those people. Like, gosh, how can I talk some sense into this person? How can I tell them that they had, there's more to life than alcohol and, and yeah, so the government does suck, but that doesn't mean that you have to live like this, you know? And it's like, why don't you get a job? Well, I don't want to work. It's not, uh, uh, you know, it's like, well, there you have it. There you have it. You don't want to work. You don't want to pay mortgages and this and that and the other. Why? Because you don't want to work. And that's what it is. There's lazy people out here. I'm not really working, okay? I get benefits. I'll be straight with you. But you know what? I'm not... I'm not taking advantage. I'm not using... I'm not getting my benefits and using drugs. Um, I'm not doing bad things with it. If anything, you know... Whatever I get and whatever I can share with anyone out there to help them get by or get a leg up, I will. You know, I've been in that spot too in my life and I've had no help, you know. Well, no, I have. My bad. I did get some help here and there, you know, and it was from the VA. Mm -hmm. When I left California, I left, I was homeless and I had been homeless for two years. I left there. That's when I decided to change my life. That's when I decided that I didn't want to do drugs or I didn't want to deal with anybody in that state ever again. I was done because that place was really toxic. But I'll tell you what, though, there is one thing I do miss about that place is the VA. Because now that I've been traveling around and checking out the VAs and dealing with the VAs, I can't believe how terrible they are. The VAs, they, they try to have an excuse for everything too. And what sucks is like, you can't sue the government. You can't sue the government, you know? You just have to take what they give you or what you're supposed to get. And I'm, I'm, I'm qualified for like everything. Yet, for some reason, it's taking them one and two years just to get approvals for stuff. Why? Why? Dude, when I was living in Long Beach and I had to deal with the VA, they had shit for me like that. Boom, 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 boom. It's almost like... <clears throat> the VA is they're, they're they're moving slow because maybe they think that if they move slower by the time they call your number oh they passed away you know what I mean that's what I mean and and I do believe that the VA is the cause of a lot of veteran suicides because of their shoddy um treatment or whatever right the VA loves to pump everybody full of pills. They love that. They don't care about healing. 
they'd rather just mask the problem and hopefully you just pass away one day and then that's it. Okay, we got you your burial, you know, thanks for serving. That's how it is, seriously. And there are some people out there that, oh, the VA is great. Well, that's because, you know, they didn't have very many issues, maybe. You know, maybe they work at the VA. You know, maybe they got out. They didn't get PTSD. They didn't get injured. They didn't get this or that. So, oh, the VA is wonderful. When I need their help, they help me. But when it comes to the people who actually are, they, you know, well, yeah, if you, you lose a limb and stuff, yeah, the VA going to help. You lose an arm, you, you, get, you know, you need glasses, they going to help. But I'm thinking like the mental health, the dentistry <laughs> at the VA in Long Beach, the dentistry over there is exemplary. It's ex excellent. There is no, I can't even say that there's anything above them. Anywhere else though, it's like they source you out. They source you out at, from the VAs, they, in, in, you know, like in the Midwest, they source you out to dentists out in town. I'll tell you what, those dentists love the VA because their solution to everything is just, just pull them out, pull them all out because it's like for one tooth, they get so many a thousands of dollars. You know what I mean? So you got the VA working with people and, and, and you know, I had to, they were going to do that to me. I wrote to the congressman. I wrote to the mayor. Uh, I wrote to the office of inspector general. Do you think they did anything? No, they didn't. And during those times, because I was having such problems with my teeth, I was contemplating suicide again. And I called the VA and I said, look, I'm, I, I'm having problems. You guys have caused me big problems with my health. You guys have risked my life because I had like two uh, cysts or tumors or growing all up in here in my face. When I came from California, I said, hey, you guys, I need a post-op. They called me and they said, it's, it's vital that I get this. And the doctor's like, well, open your mouth. And I open my mouth. She's like, you look okay. Great doc, great dentist, Dr. Chamberlain at the uh, Kansas VA. Watch out for her. You know, the VA, VA is a learning facility. I think what they do is they get the, the people right out of school and they put them in the Midwest. And the better ones, they put them in LA or something. You know what I mean? Or Los Angeles or, uh, I'm sorry, or, or Long Beach. Because uh, West LA Long, uh, VA is also a very good uh, VA. You know what I mean? So it's like, I don't know. And, you know, I don't know how the mental health is in, in Kansas, but I can guarantee you it's probably 10 times worse. It is. It is. No, I'm sorry. It is my mistake. And I'll tell you why. Because when I was contemplating suicide on the phone, talking to that nurse at the VA, you know what she told me? She told me, well, you got, okay, well, come on down and we'll take care of you. Dude, I was an hour and 45 minutes away. I said, I'm an hour and 45 minutes away from you guys. You need to send some, oh, well, we can't. Do you know how many people I could have killed driving from Missouri to Kansas VA? Distraught, mental health issue. Was she basically telling me to drive there in that state where I could have killed a whole bunch of people and by the time the police get to me, then I'm dead, then I don't have to go in. I don't have to go in there. They don't have to deal with me because I already, you know, killed my, my, I already got killed by the police because maybe I, I ran or killed a bunch of people on the way driving an hour and 45 minutes to Kansas. This is the Kansas VA. Some nurse over there that I called told me that. That's some fucking bullshit. Every time if I was feeling uneasy because I know I have an issue, I don't want to die. But I get these, these things going on in my head and I get so angry that it's like, I don't want to cope. There's worse, worse things in life than death. It's an easy way out. That's what I just wanted. I didn't want to deal with it anymore. And that's what a lot of veterans don't want to do. They don't want to deal with the VA because the VA is garbage. 
when it comes to mental health and dentistry I think because at the other at the other you know when you go to your primary they do they take your blood and they read your blood and there you go that's all you got I've been trying to have an IUD removed you know since I was in Missouri they never did they just kept like oh well we'll get to oh we didn't get it yet we're they're so shoddy and so disorganized telling me to lose weight and my doctor is like pfft, as big as a house you see I'm getting I'm getting triggered by the VA anyways I made a breakthrough that I didn't even get to what I was saying you know because I got thrown off but I did make a breakthrough today okay <laughs> Um, <clears throat> I did get emotional the past few days and I freaking figured out why that happens now. And I'm freaking so happy because I never really realized it before. Okay. I'm so, I'm getting emotional because I did it myself. <laughs> I figured it out myself. Something that the VA can't even freaking do. Pe mental health people going to these doctors, filling them full of pills, ain't fucking helping shit. And they stay on drugs. What, what, is it, what do these hospitals do? We'll give you another drug to help you from that drug. Anyways, what I have figured out... <clears throat> well, during, when I left Missouri... Or actually, shit. Yeah, when I left Missouri, like... When I went to Missouri, I, like, lost my period. It just disappeared for some reason. And... I was, for some reason, I was able to cope with everything so much better. Like, I healed up a lot of stuff. And I didn't have any outbursts. The only time I had PTSD triggers or outbursts was every single time I had to call the VA. Every time I had to deal with them in any particular way. The, the VA is the cause of a lot of veteran death. I'm going to tell you that right now. Whether you believe it or not, they are. Okay? Now... What I figured out for myself, though, was how come I was able to go through that whole time and not really get <clears throat> triggered or bothered or anything like that, right? Um, and it has to do with, um, like, pheromones, okay? I know, this is, it's trippy, okay? I lost my period in Missouri. <clears throat> Everything was cool there. I was e I was even I wasn't even having problems with uh you know like when you get off drugs and stuff like the kicking or the feel I didn't have it was like once I was there like I didn't even feel nothing. I just I was normal again or something. It was weird. I I wasn't I wasn't doing drugs. I wasn't drinking. I wasn't nothing. I was smoking cigarettes and um I was smoking pot, but the pot was okay. If anything, that just made me, you know, relax, okay? If I did feel uptight. And I did like to use it at night just so I could get to bed, right? <clears throat> so everything was great except for when I had to call VA, right? So, you know, I, I was, I, I'm sitting here today thinking like, why was it like that? You know, and why? And then I remember, well, I did get my period when I was in Missouri. And I remember it was around the time I got Brian. Isn't that strange? And that's where the pheromones come in, I think. I think it's called pheromones. I'm not sure. But, you know, when I was in Missouri, I didn't really hang out with anyone. I didn't have interaction with people, like women, men, nothing, no one. You know, I went to the store, paid my stuff. Thank you. Have a nice day. That was that was the conversation with anybody. Um, I started, when I got Brian, I had to hang out with his, uh, the, the people who I got him from, which were two women. Psycho women. Two psychos, basically, okay? I'm just grateful I got the dog away from there and out of that house, whatever. <laughs> Anyhow, I got my period around that time. And then I remembered, oh shit, you know? When I was in the military and we were in boot camp, all the chicks got our periods at the same time. There is some sort of chemical balance that happens amongst women that will align their periods, right? So I got my period because I was around a woman, right? If I'm not around any women, I won't get my period. It's just plain and simple for some reason. Well, right now. 
because I'm at that age, you know, that kind of postmenopausal type of age, right? <clears throat> and so, you know, when I wasn't hanging out with them anymore, it went away again. No more women, no more period, right? And then I went to Florida to visit the sister, you know, the chick, uh, the sister of where I got the dog. I didn't have a period till I got there. And I was emotional there too because that chick was weird and she was mean and crazy. She was even mean to the dog. And that's like her, her passed away brother's dog, you know? And it's like, no respect, right? And so I was thinking about that too. And I was like, hmm. See, because that's what you got to do when you're trying to heal yourself. You got to be alone. You got to think. You got to backtrack. Why is this happening? Right? You can't do that if you're fucking drunk. You can't do that if you're fucking tweaking. You can't do that if you're high on fucking weed. Maybe, I mean, if anything, if you want to stop thinking too much about things, you smoke a little poop poop, and then you smoke a little bud and you, you pass out. You know? <clears throat> if you want to contemplate on weed, you might take it a little too far. You know, it might be a little too psychedelic. You know, whatever. But not psychedelic, but, you know, it might be a, <laughs> some crazy stuff you might talk about. But... <laughs> <clears throat> but but that's about it, you know, and, and so when I, when I was out, when I was out here, you know, like when I was out, you know, I, I did get the hookup though for the weed. So I did use it, but I, I used it for what I needed it for. Like, I'm not trying to be Bill and Ted all day, all duh, or Cheech and Chonging out all day, you know? Yeah. You're so cool. Cause you're butted out all day. That's fucking lame. I'm going to be honest with you, you know? I'm going to, I'm, I'm into it for the medicinal purposes, you know, before I was on it to be high all the time because I didn't want to heal. Even the marijuana can, okay, it's natural, yeah, but you can also abuse that too, all right? Use what you need and put it away, okay? It's the same, It's if it's a medicine, just like pharmaceuticals, you're not going to be popping your, your medication pills all day because you feel like you want, you know? And then people are, are basically being their own doctors. They're going and buy, oh, I need it. It helps me with my stress. Yeah, it helps you with your stress because it keeps you tossed and high all day. You're going to have to stop smoking that shit to stop and think. When are you going to actually stop and think? Like, it's like that, right? <clears throat> I'm not telling anybody out there. I'm just saying that in general, right? So, so that's how I do, right? And so... <clears throat> I left Florida and the period went away again. Why? Because I went into solitude. That was super solitude though, right? And um, I went into solitude because I was going to go head back towards Illinois. No period the whole time. That's fucking wonderful, you guys. If you're a woman not getting your period and you don't have sex, and but, but it's not coming, that's wonderful. That's the most... Oh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I mean, I have IUD anyways, but, you know, like, just not getting it is a, fr a breath of fresh air. And especially if you're out here, because, like, getting it out here sucks. It's like, ugh, you're constantly having to try to keep yourself clean and sanitary and everything, right? And so, <laughs> when I got to Illinois, I didn't get it either, even though I did meet a really, really awesome, cool chick named Erin out there and her family. Maybe she didn't have her period during the time when I was there, that's why, and which, uh, thank goodness. <laughs> but, you know, I didn't get it around her because, you know, I kind of hung out with her a little tiny bit and then I bailed, I left. But after that, you guys, I was, I was super solitude girl. I was in forests, I was at creeks and Illinois and Missouri and Kansas and just, there were some really beautiful places out there that I got to experience because I felt that I needed to, I felt like I wanted to see some stuff also, you know, that I remember from school. And then you, when you go around and you see all the history that's around because you know, when you go to the national or state parks, they, they have little history information there for you. It's, it, it's interesting, you know? And so I'm like, well, wow, I like this, you know? And so I haven't had my period. So, so the period thing, back to the period thing, right? <clears throat> Since I left Florida, I had, and up until now, which is about a year, I haven't had my period, you know, except, except one time I got it, I got it on the beach 
in Texas because there was a lot of women around. I was meeting some women that were around because there were also guys that I was meeting that were around. Like I met some cool people in Texas though, don't get me wrong, okay? I did interact over there because uh, I found some people that were common sense people, <laughs> you know what I mean? They weren't like all boop, 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 up all do, do, do. So, and, and, and you know, and they were responsible people, whatever. And, and so I met a few uh, women and most likely I might've gotten my period because of the exchanging of the, you know, like that so or the firm or what did I say I called it some before I already forgot but so that's that was that okay and so I was thinking about that I was like okay I got my period there and yeah I was around people I was around one and then right now guess what I have my period I have my it just it came you know and it came while I was at that place and I was hanging out with this woman that was there I was talking with her a lot and then I realized whoa that's it that's why i get emotional i have ex not only do i have ptsd but i have extreme extreme pms i know it sounds crazy but women kill on pms people women go crazy and freaking kill people from pms syndrome premenstrual syndrome i have that i that's my breakthrough i now i know why I get over emotional for certain things at certain times. It's the PMS. Why couldn't the VA like. <sighs> Simple things like that. Chemical imbalances. So now I know. <laughs> I got to stay away from people when I get my PMS. When I get my period. <laughs> if I get it right. Hopefully, like right now I have it, <clears throat> but hopefully after today, I'm not going to get it for a really long time because I am not, I'm going back into solitude, you guys. I'm just doing it because I also remember when I was like in the forests or, you know, by running streams of water, I was at my most peacefulness and I love that, you know, and I just spent time healing myself and walking my dog and breathing the air and just being happy that I'm able to accomplish all the stuff that I've already accomplished. Like my whole life, it was like being told like, I'm not going to, you know, actually not even being told anything. No one ever really promoted me to, you know, oh, the college or you're like, I never got that growing up. Basically, you know, it, I had no direction. I never thought of anything going to college. Or, I thought about that later when, you know, I, when I was like 24, I was like, I haven't even graduated high school yet. And so I did. I went and I got my freaking diploma and I graduated from Zane Gray Continuation in Reseda, California. And I will like to say that Mr. Mencher, who was the principal, was the one who would always call me, are you coming to school anytime soon? Because I would leave. I would go to school for a little bit and I wouldn't go back. It, it's because of that guy that I graduated. Not my mom, not my dad, not anyone. It was that guy. He wanted me to finish. So he would call me. He had my cell phone number. <laughs> He's like, Miss Medina, are you coming to school? And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'll be, I'll be there. And then I did, and then I finished. And then I joined the Navy. Yeah, that's what I did. I joined the Navy because when I finished high school, I don't know if it was, I don't remember if it was Mr. Mentor or one of those teachers over there, but it was one of them that was like, well, college is next. And I was like, oh college because at that time I wasn't I was kind of lost but I wasn't dating anyone because I'll tell you what everybody that I, I or most everybody that I have dated in my lifetime they all turned out to be some sort of manipulator or narcissist or yeah like you know I didn't even learn about narcissism until way later my parents you know um I'm gonna tell you what though I, I went through a lot of shit living with my mom but I love my mom because even though I went through a lot of hate for my mom through my life, 
going through this spiritual journey right now got me to realize uh, that I love her so much because whatever happened to her, she just reflected on me. She didn't know any better. And because she was my main paternal energy in my life, I realized that it's not her fault because she learned something wrong. You know what I mean? So, and she's, my mother is a really freaking sweet person. She's, she's, she is, and she's happy and she's lively when things are well, but when they're not, it's, it's like she's at one extreme or the other. <clears throat> and, you know, we don't talk, but I love her, you know, I love her so much, you know, and, and I got real emotional the past few days and I, I pretty much told my brother and my sister what I thought about the family and it was a, it was an emotional outburst. It wasn't like crazy crying scream. It wasn't crazy typing stuff. It was just a simple explanation of stuff of how I felt about the fam, how the family was, because I have to, I, ha I have to bury my, my brother at sea. He died years ago. Shouldn't this have been done? His soul has not been put to rest. So I've decided to take matters into my own hands and, and have my brother a proper burial at sea, somewhere beautiful, somewhere where he deserves to lay his, his resting ashes, you know, because he deserves it. No matter what my family says or talk shit about my brother, no, my brother is my hero. I'm going to let you know that right now. I'd probably be dead today if it wasn't for him. So I'm just going to leave it at that. So I, I feel like my brother deserves a proper burial place, which I feel are, you know, is where I know there's beautiful waters and I would like to take him to Florida because when it's my time, I would like to join him there too. Because my family never made arrangements for any kind of family thing because my family is not family. And that's why I separated myself from them. Family doesn't talk shit about each other. Family needs to love each other. I don't want to be in a family where everybody talks shit about each other behind their back or jokes people or, or lies or manipulates. My dad's side of the family and everybody is a bunch of liars over there. Well, not, I don't know, bunch, because I can't even get a hold of my freaking cousins. They won't, my bro, my dad won't give me the numbers. It was always like my dad talking shit, my ex-husband, you know, um, my younger brother did. My younger brother was like not directly understanding what the shit talking was doing though my my older my younger brother he went into the navy he has no idea what happened to me or anything at the time right most likely because you know you lose touch with people you try to contact as much as you can when you can you know when you're out there serving you're busy you're freaking busy okay and so, I mean, it's not like I can call my brother overseas and say, look, I'm contemplating suicide. I don't know what to do. I have no one to talk to. It's not like I could talk to my dad because the first thing he'd say is, you're stupid. It's your fault you chose this life. Who taught me this type of thing? I've been trying my whole life to gain my father's love. That was another thing I had to heal from. And that's why now I also realize that that's why also why I, uh, I want to help everyone because it's like, I've been through so much in my life up until this point. It's like, once they start talking to me, boom, I instantly know what their problem is. But it's like, I can't really say things because I mean, I do sometimes and people are like, Oh, like I have enlightened some people out here. I've, I've enlightened some people in California who have actually called me back and thanked me for changing their lives for the better. And you're welcome. I did that indirectly. I didn't even know I was doing that. And it's just because of my own knowledge, right? And so like, that's how I feel when I'm out here. Like I wanna help people and once they start talking to me cause it only takes a few minutes for me to figure out what the heck is wrong with this person. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, and most of the time it's, you know, you need to heal from something, you know, but before you can heal, whatever that something is, you need to stop being codependent on like alcohol or drugs or, or whatever it is you're doing too much of to keep your mind off of healing. Okay. 
So I feel like I, oh, I want to heal people. And you know, that's how my relationships were. I was meeting broken ass people and I wanted to fix them and show them that they could be this, that, and the other. And sure, I boosted them up, but then in, they turned around and then they backstabbed me. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of sucks, but <clears throat> that's what I was used to attracting because that's what my father was. He was a narcissist, you know? I don't really think my mom was. I think my mom had some, uh, I think my mom, I think I realized that my mom is, a, she, she probably doesn't know, but my mom has, I think, spiritual gifts that she doesn't know about. She might think that she was crazy or hallucinated. It's not that, mom. You have the gift like I have. We have a gift. Larry had the gift too. It came from you. It's coming from you. This gift is from you, mom. And your family, whatever. That's where it came from. Rosalie probably has it too. And so does Georgie. Because mom, you're an angel. And you just happen to so happen to marry the devil. I'm not talking about George either. You know, I'm talking about Juan. I think George just got the short end of the stick because Juan damaged you so much. Anyways, <clears throat> that's in case if my mom ever sees this. Anyways, I do love you, mom and Rosalie. I just get, I just get emotional and I figured it out, dude. It's a PMS. So my next step now, since I've made that complete and total breakthrough, because yeah, now I see the trends through my life too, that I would have outbursts and this, that, and the other. And I, it, it's the PMS. It's gotta be. So instead of me going to the store or calling the VA and telling them I made the breakthrough because you guys didn't do shit, <laughs> you know, um, I'm going to find out like homeopathic things that can help me with that because I don't want to have to hide every time I get my period because I mean, it's probably beneficial. I do because I'm going to be honest with you. This PTSD is no joke and I get violent. I can get very violent, but I know my limits and I healed myself. And I have the strength and the mental capacity to be strong enough to fight this. Like everyone can with anything. I'll tell you what though, the first step to healing all kinds of stuff, you got to get your body right. Oh, but I hurt my back and I did this and I did that. Well, you lose that weight and your back is going to get great. I have to stay healthy. I have to stay fit. I hurt my back too. I got fused vertebrae. It's so freaking painful. The VA does nothing for it. And I'm not taking painkillers. So what do I do? I keep my weight down. If I keep my weight down, the back doesn't hurt. There's natural things to do to heal yourself. I'm sorry this is such a long video, you guys. But whatever, you don't have to watch it. But if you do probably means that you want to heal too and you're trying to see what kind of discoveries I have then maybe you can apply it to you I don't know but if I help you know awesome that's what I'm here I'm not here on YouTube like to try to monetize and have the most subscribers and even though I would like to grow subscribers because I would like people to see my videos so they can try to heal but I don't have time for the advertising. I can't be on Facebook or TikTok and shit all day. I don't even have TikTok. I have one Facebook. I have a whole bunch of them actually. And I have Instagrams, but they're all old and I don't remember passwords. And I don't really care for those anymore. I have one Facebook and two YouTubes. If you're lucky, you're going to find the videos. If not, oh well, you know. And even though I do want to help, I don't know. Maybe one day someone will find these videos and be like, you know what? That chick is doing it on her own. And she's doing it without drugs. And she's doing it through nature and personal healing and, you know, meditation. And tarot. Yes, the tarot. That's another thing. I'm going to go back to doing the tarot more because I found that when I did the tarot, even though... Uh, I'm not making anything off of it or whatever. And it can get, um, I, it can get taxing because there's a lot of readings. That, but you know what? I learned something from those readings. And as I go over the story, when I'm reading the story, I, f I know how to, um, understand traumas when it, when they're 
uh, thrown at me, okay? So if like, say for instance, I'm reading a story from the tarot and something in me gets triggered because I know it's just a story, but why am I being upset about this little part right here? It's those little parts in the tarot reading that I step back later and I'm like, okay, that tarot reading was trippy. How, why, why did I, why am I tripping on that? And that's what led me to figure out why things trigger me. That's what healing is about. <clears throat> so, yeah, sorry I over talked to you guys, but I, I feel excited because I made a breakthrough and, you know, and I probably didn't need to talk about that other stuff, the VA stuff, because it did get me riled up a little bit. But as you can see, I'm okay. And I'm okay because I'm just so happy that I made that breakthrough of now I can, uh, I'll have to just you know, it's work though, but I'll have to regulate my periods. I'll have to date them to know like maybe a week before. No, no. It's like, I think it's when I'm on it is when I'm ah, like a week before is nothing. You know, I, I do recall that. It's like when I'm actually on it is when I'm ah, because when I got to that last camp spot and I met that chick, boom, I got my period. She must have been on hers. I don't know. But I was like, ah, oh, fuck, you know? I was like, damn, I hate this, you know? That's why right away I was like, I gotta go and get a, um, do I have food in my, my mouth? <laughs> I did, sorry. That's gross, but you know what? It is what it is and shit happens, you know? Life can't be perfect. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I got my dentist appointment today, by the way. I'm gonna see if they can try to fix this one too. Um, but anyways, yeah. Um... Yeah, I'm just I'm just happy about the darn breakthrough. So I'm, so now I knew know the steps I need to take for healing, so I can keep that regulated. <clears throat> I'm not getting no pills though, you guys. I'm just gonna look up some natural remedies or things that I can do. I do know that exercise also is number one uh, for for PMS because um, I do remember when I was working out a lot before and I did uh, get my period, like when I was in LA, like it, it eased up on like uh, premenstrual cramps or cramping, whatever, because I used to get them really bad. Uh, not really bad, like maybe once a year, I would get them so bad I couldn't even get out of bed. It was so hurtful, you know, but I haven't really had that, but I, but I would, but because I did get those, I'm always, you know, mindful of me and my body. I would look up why, you know, how to get rid of pre uh, how to get rid of premenstrual cramps and things like that. And the number one thing I think I read was uh, exercise because of the exertion. And I don't know, whatever you do when you exercise, it just helps. So that's why I began working out in the past to assist with those cramps and the ease of my period. So. So now I know that my period is a big effect on my, my, my chemicals are just all jacked up. <clears throat> it's, and that happened ever since I had my son. Ever since I had my son, my, the, the chemicals in my whole body were just jacked. <clears throat> so I'm not blaming my son. It's just that shit happens, you know? <clears throat> so, so basically, um, yeah. So now I'm going, so with the healing part, because I figured out what part of my emotional, uh, uh, why I can get overly emotional because I mean I can be get triggered and be emotional not get that emotional I can just yeah, I'll, I'll you know think about it for a second and I'll I might be bothered and then I'll be like okay whatever and then I'll go about my business but for some reason during my period time it's like I can't let stuff go it makes me mad I gotta hang on to it I gotta fight for it you know it's like no I, I can't do that anymore I, I'm tired man <laughs> I'm not like, a, I don't want to be fighty fighty. I don't want to be violent. I don't want to be mean. You know, I don't, I don't like that feeling. And I think in the past I did because I didn't know the true feeling of happiness. When you feel truly happy, it's such a different feeling. It's like, it's like sunshine every day, every moment, you know, and I like that. I didn't have that in my whole life. And now that I have that, I want to keep that, <laughs> you know? So I'm trying my hardest. Like, I don't want to feel upset or hurt or sad or depressed anymore. And if I do, I'm going to separate myself right away from whatever's doing that to me. Okay. So I think I'll end it there. And, uh, you know, and that is a process of healing. That is a process of how to figure it out yourself. Because if you go to the doctor, you're most likely just going to get a pill. And they're just going to talk to you. You have to think about it. You're, you're the only one that can heal yourself. Because you're the only one that knows that what happened to you in the past. There's probably stuff that you haven't even told your therapist if you have one. It's those things that you need to heal from.
those little secrets that you tell no one. Okay? So I'm Mona, this is Chit Chat. Thank you for joining me today. If you came all the way this far, I appreciate you. And I'm here to try to help you heal too. Okay, we're in this together. And that's what my goal is, is just to try to heal others like me along the, along the way, because we can do it and we don't need those freaking pills, you guys. We don't, mm -mm. we can do it all naturally. I'm actually trying not to do the uh, THC cartridges anymore. I'm not, I'm trying to quit smoking, vaping, everything all together. If anything, I, I might want to come up with some sort of edible uh, for instead, because I just, I don't want to smoke. I don't want to drink. I don't want to do drugs. I don't want to put toxins in my body anymore if it's like that, you know? Smoking's not good for you. Yes, pot is the medication. Smoke pot. It's still smoking. It's still bad for your lungs. It's still bad for you. You know what I'm saying? That's why I feel like, you know, maybe how about make it edible or come up with something or make my own. I don't know. But I, I'm, I'm getting to the point where I just don't want to be smoking or vaping or doing any of that anymore. So it's all about keeping body healthy, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, you guys, that's all I have. And, uh, you know, if you like the chit chats, then I get, you know, I kind of like them. So I'm going to be doing some chit chats here and there. And uh, I wouldn't mind any feedback from anybody who might have gone through or might be going through stuff that I'm going through to help out, you know, me and any of the community that do come here to try to find healing. I would appreciate it if you uh, added, a, you know, your two cents on how you, you healed in, in your situation. All right. <laughs> All right. So I'm Mona. This is a sacred geometry universe chit chat, chit chatty. And I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.